Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. Once again, I'm joined by Kyle Weens uh, to tear stuff down, or actually to look at what stuff that you've already torn down and see how they work. Yeah. So you're from iFixit, CEO of iFixit. Uh, you guys sell a bunch of tools. You guys have great guides, and you guys are all about repairability. Right. And um, the thing that we're going to look at today, it's the Xbox One's Connect. It's not something that pe most people even think that they would ever have to repair. But we still want to know what makes it work. Are people getting their $100 premium when, when they buy the Xbox One? Right. Is this worth the extra price from a PS4 to an Xbox? Because you get this whole additional gadget along with it. Absolutely. So the first Xbox, or the Xbox 360, the first Kinect was a separate accessory. And it was actually when people tore that, when you tore that down, when people figured out how that worked, they realized it was like a very low resolution camera. It was yes, I think it was a 640 by 480 camera on the yeah. original Kinect. It was, not, it was all in the algorithms and all in the programming that let it do its connect magic. Right. Um, and with the Xbox One Connect, what you found is there's a lot of hardware in here. There was. Uh, yeah, the original Connect had a tremendous amount of hardware. And um, we found a lot of hardware on this one, too. So it's very sophisticated. There's a lot of uh, complexity, too. I mean, you're creating a full 3D map of the room. This is something that we have never had in right. any electronic device before. The the Connect for the uh, 360 was the first time you'd been able to do that. And this is taking it to the next level. And it's creating a 3D map, taking into account that it's going to be used in a whole host of environments, living rooms that Microsoft has no control over. So right has to work for those environments. Right. OK, so what was the first thing that you noticed when you took this apart? Sure. So uh, the way that the Kinect works is it projects a infrared grid on the room. And then it has two cameras. It has a camera that, that detects that infrared map. And it has another camera that's just a normal camera uh, watching the room. And then it has a grid of microphones that are directional microphones. So get inside. We're going to say, all right, let's take a look at We want to find out how they're projecting the infrared, what kind of cameras they're using, and then also what the circuitry is, because they don't want to offload all the heavy processing onto the Xbox. They want the Xbox to be able to continue to render your games. So they do as much processing on the Kinect as they possibly can. Which is what they did with the first Kinect, but they sent to the Xbox was right. a video Signal. Right. And the first Kinect was using technology from an Israeli startup called PrimeSense. Uh, and it was a huge contract for, for PrimeSense. Uh, you know, they, they, they got tens of millions of their sensors out into the world. And right after they, they shipped, I'm told that Microsoft tried to buy PrimeSense. And the PrimeSense folks said, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> and then they were bought up by Apple. Apple just bought them, <laughs> yeah. So here we get the, the new Kinect, and uh, it, there's no PrimeSense chip inside. So Microsoft redid all the engineering that, that the PrimeSense folks had done. Lots all of proprietary right. tech. So let's get inside. All right. So the, the first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of shiny metal here. We've got, this is a massive heat sink. Uh, that connects to it. And this, this heat sink, the way that they, this heat sink is a very custom shape. So this is actually kind of an expensive heat sink. And you can see that this is actually custom milled uh, out of a solid block of aluminum, just like Apple does with the iPads. You can actually see the milling lines mm. in here. So they CNC mill and just make them in mass. Not, not stamped. Actually. This is not stamped. This piece would be stamped. Uh, this is actually milled. Uh, so. The first thing Microsoft does when they're designing any, any new hardware these days is they pay a lot of attention to the cooling uh, because Microsoft had some issues with the Xbox 360 overheating, causing the red ring of death, and uh, all sorts of assorted fixes that people had for that. Yeah, problem. we saw in the Xbox One a giant fan on the inside. Yes. And there's actually a fan inside the Kinect as well. Yes. So that's, uh, and, and the way that the, the cooling system is, is set up, as you can see, you've got the heat sink here running longitudinally, and then you've got the fan blowing air through the heat sink through the length of the device. And that's effectively the same cooling design that, that was in the original Kinect. Uh, and, and so they're drawing from the form factor of, they need a kind of wide bar so that the microphones are, are widely spaced. You can see actually looking at the circuit board here, that there's a fair amount of empty space on this board. Yeah. They could have made this board smaller if they wanted to, but they needed the space so that the microphones would be separated from each other. And that's how you have your stereo uh, uh, microphones, you know, yes. where people are in the room, right. positional. Right. And so the microphones are actually in the base of the unit here. So base of the unit, we've got our, our spring so that you can tilt, tilt it, it. With no motor. With no motor. 
Uh, and then the microphones are actually embedded in here, and you can see the ribbon cable with the microphone leads coming out of that. So you're saying is that the, the requirement to have the microphones at a certain distance apart is kind of what defines the shape of the Kinect. That, that's my speculation. Now, you'd have to talk to the Microsoft team to, to be sure about it, but there's no reason the rest of the sensors and the cameras can all be right up next to each other. Mm. Uh, so you could probably make the Kinect a third or half the size uh, that it is if you wanted if you use fewer microphones. Okay, so the main board here, we've got our USB-like port, <laughs> custom cable uh, going out. I, I'll peel this off. This is a little uh, little heat pad. And this is, and you're not going to be able to see it here, but we, we'll pull the picture up. This is the Xbox stamp chip. So this says Microsoft on it. Uh, and it's got some thermal paste residue on there. But and You um, can make out that Microsoft logo. Yep. Yeah. So that's the secret sauce of the Kinect. This is where all the magic happens. It used to be a PrimeSense chip. Now it's a Xbox chip. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that it's a, a ST Micro that was uh, working with Microsoft to, um, to fab the chip, but it's some custom Microsoft technology. So this could be Microsoft uh, you know, doing like Apple and, and getting more integrated with the chip design internally, right. or it could be they contracted that with another company. I'm still looking for some additional inf insight into that. When you do that, you're looking at serial numbers and their online repositories uh, for, from chip makers to kind of right. match how people Yeah, you can't their... just look at a chip and say, this is what it is. You need to, generally there's a number stamped on and then you look online. And in the case of this chip, we've never seen that number before. Yeah. Go figure. So we know it's a custom system on chip. We know there's 128 megabytes of RAM on there. So uh, it's a full-on computer in the Kinect. It's taking uh, the, the imagery from the cameras, doing some fancy processing on it, and then sending it off to the uh, Xbox. And so over, over the next days and weeks, we're going to see people reverse engineer that uh, that signal so that you can uh, hook it up to you know, a normal computer. Yep. Microsoft will release an SDK for it at some point, like they did with the previous Kinect. Put in uh, robotics or all yes. sorts of art projects. And I think that's the most fundamental thing about the Kinect is, yes, it's useful as a living room sensor and it makes games fun. But we should have sensors like these baked into all sorts of products. I mean, you walk into a room, you want to wave your, your arm to turn the light on. Yeah, this is the sort of sensor that would be detecting that. And to detect that kind of visual information, you need cameras. And right. that's the Kinect for the Xbox One has two cameras we have laid out here. Right. So this is where things get kind of exciting. I love these cameras. These are really cool looking. So this is the infrared camera. Uh, and you can see a little bit of circuitry on the board, kind of boring on the backside. Although this is actually thermal transfer off of it. Uh, but you can see the lens is just absolutely massive. It is. It's massive because it has to have a pretty wide field of view. It does. And you can see how, I mean, uh, the curvature of the lens, this is, and when you plug it into your Xbox, you'll see it's a really wide field of view. Uh, and the same thing on, this is the normal standard video RGB camera. camera, and I can pop the hood off there. But you, the amount of optics on here, I mean, this is just like, I mean, this is just as big a camera as on some point-and-shoot cameras, or mm -hmm. bigger. Uh, now, I, I have over here, for comparison, this is the main camera off of the Nexus 5. Yeah. So you can see the amount of light that's let in to this sensor versus this one is uh, dramatically less. So the picture from the Xbox. And even though this is technically like a 1080p camera, it's, it's receiving it, the sensor that's taking that information in is much bigger than the yes. sensor you'd find in this 8 megapixel right. Nexus 5. Right. And so you're going to get a lot of low light data. Yes, which is important because a lot of people play video games in the dark. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's just really, really neat to see the optics on these things. And we, uh, I, we did not identify who was making these. It is kind of fun. On the cable itself, it says confidential. <laughs> OK. All right, Microsoft, we found your confidential cable. OK, so what is generating the signal that the infrared camera sees? That's this big hunkin' thing. And you can see uh, the, each of these, there are actually three IR blasters, as they're commonly called. Uh, and, and so there are uh, three IR transmitters there. And then each uh, of these creates a different lens field. Uh, projecting the grid onto the room. And I haven't had a chance yet to see exactly what that grid looks like, but I'm really excited to pull an IR filter off a camera and fire the Kinect up and take a look at the room. It's, it's a light that not the naked eye can't see, but like you said, if you pull IR filter out with the original Xbox Kinect, 
you projected this like a grid of dots. It looked like you know bacteria in a room or something, right? right. Uh, and you would imagine that there's it would be similar with the Xbox One Connect, or maybe even more. Perfect right. systematic pattern. But the original Kinect only had one transmitter. This mm -hmm. has three. Yeah. And we know everything that they're doing here is trying to get better granularity. Uh, so I'm, I, it's going to be fascinating to see. I mean, this is, this is definitely next generation technology, much improved and quite a bit different design. And you know, we, we get the hardware and we look at it. Well, this is actually a case where we need to fire it up and, and play with it a little bit more. So I'm excited to be learning more and more about the Kinect over time. All right. and then I would say this is just the beginning. I mean, yeah. there's going to be a huge number of people tinkering. The Kinect was so useful for people with robotics. You'd see people actually taking the Kinect and putting it on the quadcopters and then using quadcopters to find their way around the room. Yep. So this is fundamentally enabling technology for a broad range of applications, not just home entertainment. And, and with the first Kinect, PrimeSense licensed its ships to other manufacturers. Right. Like ASUS had their own Kinect-style right. bar, and you can use the SDK, the, the Windows SDK for Kinect, with those bars. Since it's all proprietary Microsoft technology now, you know, hopefully they're going to be a little open with it. But we don't. I hope so, and I'd like to see a Kinect that they would sell standalone, so you didn't have to buy an Xbox with it, and maybe with a standardized cable. The non-USB cable is a little bit frustrating. Hopefully, yeah. we'll get an adapter so you can hook them up to a traditional PC. Now we didn't talk about uh, the actual disassembly of this Kinect, and, and how was that? Were there a lot of was there a lot of glue? Was there it... wasn't really a lot of glue. They had uh, on the bottom here. They had uh, you know the the rubber. So you had to remove the rubber thing, so you sort of break that when you pull it off, uh, and then and then you unscrew it. But th because they got rid of the motor on this, there isn't a whole lot of moving parts, and we haven't seen a whole lot of need for connect repair, right. <laughs> which means that they, I think they did a pretty good job. <laughs> uh, I mean, there isn't, aren't really people out there selling connect parts because, in general, they haven't really been breaking. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, pretty darn straightforward to get into. Um, used a few different kinds of screws. Uh, we gave it a repairability score of six out of ten. So kind of middle of the road. It was it was a little bit um, complex to get in, and they um, the. IR blasters are not replaceable separate from this main board. They're, they're soldered on there. So that was something that we gave them. We were thinking that maybe that's something that, that could wear out. And uh, you have to replace this entire board, which I suspect is going to be expensive enough that it might not make sense to uh, yeah, if it's going to be 100 bucks or right. whatever you just Microsoft get a whole new connect. Exactly. Yeah. And, and even to diagnose a problem, you know, you'd have to figure out whether it's the, the IR blaster or the IR camera or the regular camera that's broken, you know, if you're plugging it in. And hopefully the SDK will allow you to do some diagnoses. Right. All right. So Very overall, cool. a really interesting hardware design. Uh, they could have made it a little easier to get into, but because they don't break, I'm not going to begrudge them that too much. Mm -hmm. uh, and Clearly, a lot of thought went into the thermal design. A lot of thought went into a next generation sensor design. Uh, we got the stereo microphones here, so, or real you know, omnidirectional microphones. So, I, I think this is a really exciting design, and I think this is really something that, that sets the Xbox One apart from the PS4. I didn't really consider buying a PS4 myself. I don't generally, I mean, I, I should, I, I buy game consoles more based on the tech than the games. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's bad of me, but I bought an Xbox One because I thought I wanted to play with the Kinect. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. Well, thanks a lot, Kyle, uh, for bringing the Kinect, uh, Xbox One's Kinect, dissembling it and going over all the parts with us. You'll be able to find more guides on iFixit's website and get the tools you need to take mm -hmm. this stuff apart, and you'll find more Cool stuff on Tested.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our site. We have a lot of stuff there as well. I'm Norm, and we'll see you guys next time.